Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, in this video series, we're going to do lots of double and triple integrals and so lots of multivariable calculus. And um, yeah, so uh, first thing first, both double integrals and triple integrals can be used to represent volume. And uh, in future videos, you're going to learn about changing order of integration, um, which you'll see what I mean um, by in a little bit so you'll you'll see more clearly what i mean by oh, changing order of integration in a second uh, but yeah you'll learn about that in future videos and uh you'll also learn about um switching to um polar coordinates a spherical coordinates and um cylindrical coordinates which may make your double integral or triple integral a lot easier to do um than like you know trying to do it as given in rectangular coordinates um, yeah, okay, okay, cool. Um, but otherwise, uh, let's get started here. So if you use double integrals to represent volume, then what you need to have inside of your double integrals is some function z that depends on just x, just y, or both x and y. So here, our function z, which equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, clearly only depends on x. And whether it depends on just x, just y, or it depends both on x and y, your function z inside of your double integrals will represent some surface. So here, z equals root 1 minus x squared represents this blue surface, which clearly is a half pipe. Uh, but uh, notice that this half pipe is restricted to some region uh, above which it lies, and that region is this region r. Our region R is restricted to go from negative 1 to 1 along this red x-axis and then um, to go from 0 to 2 along our green y-axis. So our region R here is the 2 by 2 box over which our surface Z lies, right? And our region R clearly um, this time is in the um, xy plane and it's this guy here, right? This rectangular 2 by 2 box here at the bottom, um, right? Okay, 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 cool, cool. Um, now, dA here is an infinitesimally small rectangle in our region R. So dA is um, either dx by dy or it's dy by dx, right? So it's a very tiny um, little infinitesimally small uh, rectangle in our region R, dA, right? And so if you take that, right, and, and, um, and, and then multiply it by, um, by z, then what you're going to get is like, the volume of an infinitesimally thin um, uh, rectangular prism, right? That that is like a an an, an, an aggregate, like adding up all of these uh, infinitesimally um, a small thin rectangular prisms is how you're going to approximate the volume of um, of this half pipe, right? Or the volume of this half of a cylinder. So I'll say more about this in in other videos with visuals showing you what I mean by like the uh, uh, the um, volume of the um, rectangular prism above our, our infinitesimally small uh, box DA, which is in our region R. So I'll say more about this later. Like I want, I want this video to like not be confusing because I'm talking about things that are going to be in other videos. But yeah, I also want to thoroughly explain what all this means. But yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it. So um, so ZDA is kind of like um, FDX when you use like. Uh, rectangles to infinitesimally thin rectangles and Riemann sums to approximate um, to, to approximate the area under the curve. So here we're trying to do like the volume under the surface, but like instead of using infinitesimally thin rectangles, we're using um, infinitesimally thin uh, uh, rectangular prisms. Um, okay, 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 okay. But you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it. So, so as I said, since dA is either dx by dy or dy by dx, uh, which you choose, which interpretation of dA you choose, will have an impact on uh, the limits of integration that go on this first and then the second integral. So if we choose dy times dx uh, to mean dA, since y is first, uh, in that case, when we say dy times dx, this first um, uh, integral sign will have to have limits involving y, because we're saying dA is dy times dx, and then the second one will have dx. But if we choose to interpret dA to mean dx times dy, equally valid, then this um, inner um, integral sign will have limits involving x and the outer one will have uh, limits involving y. So you see we can change 
um, these uh, limits of integration uh, from from like Y to X to go to like X to Y. And that could have a huge impact on whether or not your double integral is easy to do or hard to do. And likewise with the triple integrals. And therefore we call that uh, changing order of integration. And so I'll show you that uh, order of integration matters. And I'll give you an example of that case in uh, future videos. Also, um, since your double and triple integrals are frequently given in rectangular coordinates, sometimes switching to polar, cylindrical, or spherical coordinates uh, may make your integrals a lot easier. And so we'll see examples of all of these in um, future videos to come. Yeah? All right, cool, cool, cool. But let's keep it simple here. And we know now that the double integral over region R of ZDA means the volume contained by that surface at the region R, and that's that, right? Like, so obviously also um, inside of uh, these uh, semicircular end caps in this particular case, but you get it, you get it. So it's the volume of like, the volume um, that, that, that is contained by the region R and bounded by the surface um, Z. Uh, above R, right? Okay, okay. And sometimes, you know, they like to call this region R, region D, but whatever, whatever. That's just change of like R to D, right? Doesn't mean anything else. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. So, so here we're not actually going to do the double integral. In all of the future videos, we will actually do the double and triple integrals, but here we're not going to. What we're going to do is cheat, exploit geometry. And um, since we know uh, from our geometry class a long time ago that um, a cylinder has volume pi r squared h, and this is one half of a cylinder, we just need to use the formula uh, one half pi r squared h, uh, and then use the appropriate radius, which is one, and then the appropriate height, which is two, and then we'll be able to find the volume of this half pipe here, and therefore we'll be able to uh, figure out the value of this double integral over this region r. And so first, uh, if we chose dy times dx, these are the limits that we'd put on. But like I said, we're not actually going to do this double integral. We will uh, do uh, future examples of how to do double integrals like this one. Uh, we're just going to use this formula, 1 half pi r squared h per half of a cylinder. And when we do, we learn that the value of our integral here is pi, and therefore the volume of our um, half pipe is also pi. Yeah, okay, cool. This is it for part one, and um, I could have said a lot more and explained a lot more, but it might confuse some of uh, some of you, and so I'll wait for um, the other examples to come to say more, yeah? Okay, cool. All right, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you learned a lot. Keep watching. Take care.